I feel a little bit cold and shaking, so don't get me wrong. It's my first time to be in a cold place. <laughs> Bonjour, Madame et Monsieur. Salam. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to all the representatives of the international community and to the people of Geneva for taking your time out to attend this uh, amazing ceremony. And to all my brothers and sisters around the world, and particularly to our, my best friends and the heroes on Manus Island and Nauru. Thank you to the Martin Annual Award Jury for selecting me or for picking me. And to the city of Geneva for hosting me and to the Swiss government for allowing me to come to this country. I never dream about it in my life all to come to this country one day. And it's still, I'm in Swiss today or I'm in Geneva, but I feel like, no, I'm still in Manus. I don't feel like I'm in Geneva. It's, like, it's not like a real. I pay my admirations and respect to the other finalists, especially to my brother, Mario, and to my sister, Erin. Unfortunately, she's not uh, able to be with us. It's not an easy to be in a place where you fight for your rights, but unfortunately, there are so many boundaries on the roads, and there are so many walls that you have to jump. Every day, you have to jump, one after another. One door open, another door close. It is such an important and courage for people like us to stand up. And I believe there are many people in this room, they have to stood up for the right of the others. And today we believe that it is not from where I come from. I come from a place where the rights of a human rights defenders, it's undermined. And the rights of refugees, it's always disrespected and our we have been discriminated and segregated in our own country. I experienced a war in a country that where the current president of the country is accused as an international, on the International Criminal Court as a criminal. He have committed genocide on Darfur. I'm a victim of that genocide. I managed my way to go all the way far from Sudan to start fighting for the people who are left behind in Darfur and to the people who are even still the victims around the world. But unfortunately, I found myself locked up in one of the democratic countries, one of the Western countries that believe in democracy and in justice. I find myself locked like an animal in the cage. I accept this award on behalf of all the asylum seekers around the world, and particularly those people who have stood up with me fought with me, supported me, and I, can, I wouldn't do it without, alone. I, and I wouldn't do it without your support. And most importantly, this award, it means a lot. And it just not mean one thing to us, but it means that today we are so happy that the international community recognize our existence, our struggle, our fights, and they made us to believe that there is a hope for another day and the hope that we have lost. We have lost hope, we have lost faith, and we struggle to survive, not day to day, but hour after an hour. Not an easy to be incarcerated in a place where all the fingers pointed at you as a criminal, and all the words that you hear from the people surrounding you that you have made a mistake. Why do you come to this country and you deserve to be in detention center? while you cannot even, they will not even give you a chance to define yourself or to express yourself in a way that to tell them, no, I'm only seeking your protection. I'm not seeking something else. And I'm here to contribute, to be part of your community, to support, to offer my best ears. But unfortunately, when you are a powerless, people never listen to you. So I took this path to stand up and fight for the rights of everyone on Manus Island. And through my roads, the five years that I spent it on Minus Island, I have faced so much. I have been harassed, 
I have been put in a, in, in a jail from the detention center, solitary confined, and they, de they deprivate me my own, even own space to move around. And all I hear from them is, you are a troublemaker, or you are not supposed to be where you are. And why you always complain? Because you came from a war, and you came from a place where there is a conflict, and you came from a place that there is no safety. Why you always complain? And the reason why I can tell why I complain, I complain because in my country, normally people will be tortured physically, and you know yourself you are going to die. But it's one of the worst elements that we see today, people have been tortured mentally or psychologically, that it is going to be with you, and it's going to affect you on your daily life. And as an example for my three days that I've been here in Geneva, every day before I go to bed, I have to look around where are my friends, where are my friends, where are the people that I always I look after them. Because it's part of my routine in Manus Island that to look after 30 or 35 people every day, trying to give them a hope, trying to tell them that please stay alive for the next day. Despite that hope, it's the fake hope or false hope, but I wanted to save the life of those people. And it's not such an easy thing to do that. I know too many of you today in this room, they are wondering that how did I get here? And even myself, I'm wondering, how did I come here? <laughs> uh, it's such a, I'm far away from Manus, thousand kilometers away, far from Manus, but my thoughts are still on Manus. When I came to, when I came to Australia, I was 20 years old. Very, you know, young man, energetic, and has so much to share and to offer. But in the States, I have been put in a cage for the last six years. But that cage, instead of making me weak, the cage made me so strong. The cage even gave me, I mean, a chance to meet people, beautiful people like you, to meet the right people, the people who are always fighting day and night for the rights of the others. And it's not a, such an easy path. But you have, I have to be a strong. I have to speak on behalf of everyone else. We... We, we can stay, they send us to PNG, we can stay in PNG because it's not safe and we have no right to stay. And we can go to another country because Australia won't allow us. And we can, we, can, we can come to Australia because we wealth more to the politician in Australia. So when you stay on the Manus, you wealth more for the politician in Australia. We are thousands of kilometers away from Australia. But every element of our life, every, every decisions, everything in that place where we are, it's been dictated by the Australian politician or in one context I say Australian governments. We were forcibly removed in 2013. We were forcibly removed and handcrafted, again is our will, to Manus Island. And all we did is we, sought, we seek a protection from Australia. But Australia sent us to a place where there is no protection as in Papua New Guinea. In the last five years, I have lost 12 people. My best friends, the people that I look after, and I always regret that why I didn't do whatever it takes to save the life of those people. But unfortunately, I was a powerless. I have nothing in my hand to offer. And those people, 11 of them, have lost their life due to the medical negligence. We have been denied a basic, fundamental basic things, medical access. There is no proper hospital that where we can get a treatment. There is no a proper uh, a psychological award that we can talk to the counselors to tell them what happened to us. All we get is, there is a one big question mark, go back where you come from and you are not welcome in our country. This is all we get. 2014, when we start protesting as a simple, and the word is a freedom. We want freedom, we want justice. And we end up by losing one of our close friends. And as an example, he has been beaten to a death. And today, I'm standing here to share his story. And this award will be for the 12 people who have lost their life and will be for the people who are still incarcerated on Manus Island and Nauru. 
we are not forgotten. And we are today so happy that we are not forgotten. And I still can say that the Manus people today, they are not sleeping. They are still awake. It's a 4 a.m. in Australia or 3 a.m. in Manus Island, but people are still awake. They want to know the conclusion of this. They want to know how much the international community wants want to offer or want to support them. The refugees and asylum seekers on Manus Island today, they become as a community. They, be, they are fighting together in one hand because they believe that if they don't unite, they don't become as a one, one community, they cannot look after each other. And the way that we look after each other even more than the way even we have seen our own parents. In five years, every single day you wake up in the morning, the first thing you see when you open your eyes is the fence, two meter fence higher, or you see your friends. And when you see them, you don't see them in a good shape, you always see them in a bad shape. And you wonder that, what will we do to support that person? What can we do? What can I offer to you? And in the other hand, you see a people who are wearing a gray uniform that always pointing finger at you, like they look at you in a way that you are not even a human being. You are not a criminal, you are not an animal. You are just a number. And one of the sad things that for me and for everyone on Manus Island and Nauru, we are known to the Australian government as a numbers. They have erased our names, they have stolen our identity and they gave us a number. And guess what is my number? My name, it's not my number. My name is QNK002. And if I don't use that number, I don't get water to drink. If I don't use that number, I don't get food to eat. And if I don't use that number, I don't get medical access. And I have to repeat this number for the last six years and it's become my name. It, it took so long for me to speak or to repeat my name, to just to call as this. It's not such an easy to call my name. Not easy things. Despite my involvement with the journalists, every day they ask me a question, what is your name? Ex you know, tell us what's your name. My name is QNK002. And imagine five years old kid or a, a baby born kid in detention center, he will be given a number. And that baby, all he knows is the fence and all he knows is the detention center and his name is a number. He hasn't got a name. Imagine where we have gone. This is an historical moment today. This is an historical moment and I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the people on Manus Island, the refugees on Manus Island and Nauru. And most importantly, I would like to congratulate to all the refugees around the world. Speak up for your rights. No matter where they put you, Speak up of your, for your rights. Try to overcome your fears. And I believe there are so many young men and so inspired young men like myself around the world in every refugee uh, detention center or, or refugee come around the world. They are, but they are fearing of persecutions. They are fearing of the harassment. They are fearing of being tortured. But sometimes, as a human being, you have to have that kind of feeling that Try to victimize yourself, put yourself in a front page, sacrifice yourself for the sake of others. Freedom is not free, you have to pay for it. And the payment has to be your sacrificial. And the payment that we are paying today on Manus and, My and Nauru, it's the sacrificial that we are doing. And I, I took this, this golden opportunity to sacrifice myself, to put myself in the front, and to come all the way here to share this such amazing story. And I cannot call it amazing story, but this is one of the sad stories that you never get to hear. And this is the story that, I mean, you need, to, you need to feel it. You don't need to think about it. Don't think about it. I don't want you to think about this story, but feel it. Imagine losing your humanity and replace it with cruelty and inhumane. Imagine putting, people, putting innocent people, people who are vulnerable people, seek your protections, putting them and expose them to a, such a cruel and inhumane conditions. Condition that make them even lose face of their existence, lose face 
of God, even God existence. Despite those people are mainly from a, a countries that always, you know, a Muslim countries or Christian countries, Jewish, they believe and they have a strong belief. But the situation that they found themselves in forced them even to step away from that and think that God does not even exist. It's not a such an easy thing. Once again, I would like to say thank you very much for this moment. And I would like to say also thank you very much for the international community once again for taking this opportunity to listen to our story and for sharing our story, for being here. And most importantly also I would like to say thank you very much to the uh, to Swiss government for this opportunity. And I'm only going to be here for two weeks and I will still going to go back to Manus. And people are waiting for me. People are believing that they are watching very close. They are waiting for me to share this award with them and to let them know that the international community acknowledge our existence, our resilience, our struggle, and most importantly, it's going to be an historical moment for us. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much. <laughs>